Hello beautiful people love into the land. Wow, I must be delirious. Sorry about that. I have been super busy all day and I have barely eaten or had anything to drink, so I might possibly be delirious. So who knows how this review will go. But anyway, as you can see, I am reviewing the Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. So let's just uh, get into it, shall we? The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard is a 2021 American action comedy film directed by Patrick Hughes with a screenplay by Tom O'Connor, Brandon Murphy and Philip Murphy from the story by Tom O'Connor. It's a sequel to 2017's The Hitman's Bodyguard and in it the bodyguard Michael Bryce continues his friendship with assassin Darius Kincaid as they try to save Darius's wife Sonia. I was a huge fan of the first film. I laughed so much through that film and by the end demanded a never ending franchise. I loved it so much. It was even my fourth favourite film for 2017. So to get a sequel I was pretty damn excited and the trailer didn't disappoint and the truth is neither did this film. Now if you want me to be super critical, I can because I'm not blind. The film does feel too long and there are too many filler scenes and the story feels pretty scattered and illogical. Now I know these films are meant to be over the top ridiculous but this one pushed it a bit too far whereas I felt the first one had a more simple story just executed to insane levels. Sometimes it was hard to follow the plot and with so many thick accents which were written into the story it was a bit hard to understand a bit of the dialogue. While I love Morgan Freeman and love this ridiculous but related storyline enforcing the reality of blended families, his character was super cliche and predictable and didn't really fit or need to be in the story at all. These are the God's honest realities of the film. It's not perfect and these things were an issue but did I care? Not really. I was laughing hysterically along with my mom and other folks in the cinema. Not all the jokes landed, but when they did they were gold and I was laughing well after when the joke had passed. I'm still laughing over Tara Salada. I'll never be able to eat it now without laughing. <laughs> this is a it. Ryan Reynolds is Ryan Reynolds and can do no wrong in my mind. Samuel L. Jackson is Samuel L. Jackson, but Selma Hayek has taken Sonya's crazy, intense Latin fire and dialed it up to a thousand and I was living for it. She really dominates and shines in every facet of this film and watching her kick ass and maim and kill was the highlight of my afternoon and she still managed to throw in some moments of softness which was extra nice. I think her comedy is awesome, her action is awesome and I've never related to a character more than when she screamed, not the stairs, I'm not wearing a sports bra. Can't tell you how deeply that spoke to me. Antonio Banderas is visually comical but his character and performance are more on the serious side like with Gary Oldman's character in the first film and I actually appreciate this because when he's on screen we get to breathe and take a moment to relax from all the non-stop action and constant jokes so he brought a lot of relief even if he wasn't the best or most threatening villain. There were a lot of unnecessary characters in this film for sure but again I don't really care. It is fast paced but that doesn't mean I don't feel the dip with filler scenes nor does it mean I didn't notice that this film went longer than it needed to but at least I was entertained. For the most part the jokes were funny, the action was awesome, visual effects were awesome, would I watch another sequel? Hell yes I would! With some films I need serious and I need believability, I need to feel grounded in the story and the characters. I'm not looking for that with this. I'm looking for Selma Hayek screaming and cussing in Spanish. I want Samuel L. Jackson saying motherfucker so many times I lose count and almost don't even notice it anymore. And I want Ryan Reynolds being his fabulous ridiculous calls it as he sees itself and that's exactly what I got. I also have to give a huge round of applause to Ryan Reynolds on his spectacular product placement for Aviation American Gin, which was the gin he acquired a stake in back in 2018 and may or may not still be involved in. But watching the camera pan to a perfect bottle of aviation as Reynolds grabs it and uses it to smash in a man's skull, it took all my willpower not to jump up and cheer. I haven't loved a product placement so much since Return of the Killer Tomatoes. Sometimes it's the small things in life that make it worth everything. Usually with most of my reviews I can go on and on and on and you've noticed probably if you've been watching my videos for a while. I can go on and on and on about what's wrong or right but I don't feel the need to do that with this film. It's exactly what you think it will be. It has the flaws you expect 
perfect and I'm pretty sure the people who hated the first one will hate this one so maybe don't watch it. But if you love mindless senseless fun in the guise of action and comedy then why not relax and watch this film? I don't regret it and I can't wait to do it again! To top it off the soundtrack is amazing. I'm loving that so many films this year are featuring Tina Turner songs. I want more. Yes thank you please. I nearly died laughing when this film managed to include Friday by Rebecca Black but I was very disappointed the film itself didn't include Hit Me Baby one more time. That did crush my movie spirit a bit. Nevertheless, still an awesome film. Not as awesome as the first, but I'll take it. I've, I, I've said in the past, the more I like a film or I'm just at base level entertained where I don't have to overthink or overanalyze or even see or look for a deeper meaning in anything, I'm just meant to sit down, turn my brain off and have a good time with those kinds of films, I find it really hard to review them because that's all you're meant to get from them. And that's what I got from this film, so yay, film succeeded. It, it did exactly what it was meant to do. But I do find that makes them hard to review sometimes. Sometimes the more I love a film, the harder it is for me to review if it's just this type of entertainment. But with other film, films that are more on the artistic side, um, if I really love them, it's really easy to talk about why I love them and break it down analytically. But with this, oh no. Don't analyze shit, don't overlook it, don't overthink it. Yeah, I said it. There are problems. They're there. I ain't stupid. But do I want to dwell on them or give a shit? No! I was just there to have a good time. And that's what it was there for. So, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you! Anyway, if you have seen The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard, comment down below, share your thoughts on it. Um, if you haven't seen it, let me know if you're thinking of seeing it. And if you have seen the first film, comment and let me know what you thought about the first film. I think right now with everything that has been going on, life is still really crazy. I think it's important to have some kind of mindless, fun films that aren't that realistic. Sometimes they're poorly executed. I don't think this one is. I know a lot of people are going to think that. That's perfectly fine. I personally don't think it, but I feel like films like this are really important right now to kind of just give people that escape and lift their spirits a little bit and just not make them remember anything that is going on in the world right now as opposed to like all these dramas and even comedy films that are all about the pandemic, but let's make it funny. It's like, we're still freaking in it. Stop doing this shit. Nobody wants to be reminded of what they're going through right now. That is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. So until then, bye.